Only one can claim immortality. Who will emerge victorious? The final battle begins! That's right, it's time to make our grand finals head underway. On one side, we have a team that is absolutely the best team of the year, but on the other side, the strongest team of the tournament. It is Team Spirit who have shown that they are no slouches when it comes to the first 10 minutes, particularly the laning phase. Yes, this laning phase is gonna be the ultimate test for this best of five. It's gonna be a long journey to get through this finals, and who walks away winning this laning phase could just end up winning the entire thing as Maposhka will end up going down. Toku finally claims first blood for Gaming Gladiator. But I like what Spirit have brought out here in game one, right? These are a lot of heroes that are not afraid to skirmish early and take straight back, back to you. To the death against Tofu will end up helping to get the kill onto to, uh, Tofu, but will end up falling into the end. Ace is gladly going to be able to dive a bit more onto Maposhka. In fact, they're just going to bring everybody up here. Try and go on Ace again. This is when the Lone Druid is susceptible. Perfect opportunity with the Bear now being put on cooldown. They have done serious damage to Ace, killing him so many times. And even maybe catching Tofu here. Seller's going to try and slow him down, but that's two supports without a real stun. They're just going to back away, though. Fortunately, the Pango versus the Beastmasters doesn't necessarily leave you the most options. Can't really put to use that Rolling Thunder super well. He's going to try for it anyway, perhaps. Going to force out the Primal Roar. Collapse now going to try and back away with that extra bit of movement speed. Does get hit by the Dark Hopter Ultimate. That's going to slow him down enough. Good Snowball pickup from Mira. That buys him a Get couple Oro. seconds. But Gwyn is going to follow that ball. He is perfectly going to be able to hit him both. The Swashbuckle lays it enough, though. And Jirachi and Gwyn are now in trouble. Top of the coil. Laurel going to lock him down. And there's not much these supports can do to stop it. In fact, they're just going to feed right alongside the other two of Gaming Gladiators as Team Spirit in a five-man move, sweep over Gaming Gladiators, run them down underneath their towers, and even through the portal, Toku will be denied that exit. Instead, he'll head back to the fountain after a triple kill for Yutoro. It's funny, but I feel like the game plan is kind of swamped where Team Spirit want to be able to run over Gaming Gladiators, take these outer towers so they can disrupt that ancient farming. They're going to go straight to it. No hesitancy whatsoever. Immediate coil put onto Quinn, but they don't really have the strength to be able to bring him down just yet. Protected by all of Gaming Gladiators, who, again, they saw Team Spirit in the bottom lane show up as five. They will do the same here in the mid lane. Quinn. Looks to find his mark, looks to see if he can drive right on through and straight to Maposhka. He'll find him here in the corner, clear out most of the trees, but Laurel's actually going to bounce back in here. They're going to retake the fight. Maposhka's going to stand and fight as best he He's can, but the off Ace immediately. Laurel trying to make his way out, and oh, the silence, maybe he gets clipped again. He's dead, couldn't jump to his orb in time. Yeah, they get Ace, but it does cost them quite a bit. You mean have a lot of tools to lock down these mobility heroes if they can find them. Right now, Maposhka just doing some scouting. Do you mean to spot Maposhka? But <laughs> there's nowhere for him to really run. He knows it too. He's definitely been caught, but he got some good information. Information that'll lead to the pickoff on Ace. He saw all those heroes and he said, guys, this lone druid is alone in the top lane. Again, kill him. Look towards that second Roshan with it. Get the spell and debuff immunity up for the silences that are causing them problems in the fight. Then you're not too worried about anything as Quinn is getting shredded by the death Yeah, throw. even if you get out the Rolling Thunder, the physical damage from Yutoro is too much for him to handle. Tofu was kind of desperate, wanted to be able to get that kill on Mira, maybe trying to take away the Aegis, but frankly, he doesn't do nearly enough damage right now to deal with this carry, even on low HP like this. Missed the dead shot on Mira. Managed to sidestep that one, and they'll dive Tofu pretty easily. Yutoro does manage to get off the timeline server so barely. Meanwhile, Celery is picked off in mid. Team Spirit, they are absolutely outplaying Game of Gladiators right now on the map. They just know all of these heroes are getting picked apart. Team Spirit will play it safe, play it slow. Aegis out in 50 seconds, so you have to think about the timer here. Look at that burst damage, Quinn! Black caught by the coil and instantly killed by Yutoro. And you can feel it, Yutoro seeing an opportunity. They're going to be able to cut down Celery, and now he goes in for the kill. The Aegis does expire, but the rest of his team provides the disable. No, so his second life comes back up. He's going to shred through Ace. Looks over to Tofu next. Now, last left, perhaps, Dorachio trying to run him down. Dorachio is doing his best he can, but up against three different cores, he can't actually fight back. He has Yutoro to run away. Oh, missing out on the dead shot. Yutoro is unstoppable. He's just diving into the base like it's nothing. He was thinking about it again. So Team Spirit are going to slowly approach. They're going to group up together okay. and take this fight. Yatoro just time lapsed to the fountain and back to get his BKB. He will not have time lapse for this fight. That he says, I don't need it. With the three man coil, it's 
it's looking beautiful, and Yutoro's right in there with his fresh BKB to lay the damage in these cores. Once again, Ace has no chance with the bear, and of course the Beastmaster's gonna lock down that ball. You're not going anywhere, Quinn. They're gonna catch more. Tofu is gonna be the last one down. Jirachu only survives because of his TP. Uh... <laughs> Maybe game two. <laughs> High ground play for sure, right? You let him go into you, abuse the fact that the calling's a really strong defensive spell. You catch the tree in first, that's a nice pickoff. That is actually gem. really nice with the gem on the ground. Yeah, okay, Ooh. so you needed a gem in this game, Maposhka will give it to you. I don't know if you know what's coming for you right now, but <laughs> you're not gonna like it. It's gonna be a shot to the back of the yeah. head. Yeah, gone! <laughs> I... <laughs> Blown away by Yatoro, and they catch Quinn in the mid lane. They don't need Yatoro to make this kind of play. Laurel activates his BKB to catch the opposing mid laner. And with two dead, a double damage activated. Team Spirit are just all but just waiting for the creep wave to catch up with them. Well, that's one way to break the high ground. Just one shot an enemy off lane carry here. Oh, and uh, force it with a double damage here. Yatoro has AC Aura behind him now as well. So that Deso plus the Swarm plus the AC it's just going to amp this physical through the roof right now, which makes this high ground siege a lot more tempting. Here it goes through the jump. BKB immediately activated by Duraccio, but there's that physical damage. Duraccio, he can't actually stand up against Yutoro and has of to back away. Of course he's diving. Yutoro, yeah, he's just going to go for it. See if he gets the grid and got it! Oh, no way! The final bit of damage required. Yutoro can claim it. Yutoro, boss. This man knows no fear, no limits right now. He's just taking your base at 30 minutes. A position Gaiman is used to putting their opponents in. Yeah, I don't see how they, how they stop this without Duraccio. I mean, I think Mira can also jump if he really wants to just force the issue. Yeah. This Tuscar is hella tanky right now. Gossamer Cape, Drum, happy to start the engagement, particularly if he can find a good core target. He got feared on the jump. That was, well, that was incredibly impressive, actually, but it will not yield them the fight. And it'll be a second lane. I mean, Mira's quite farm. Oh, yeah. You're talking about a high ground break mechanism. They really get in a stalemate and need it. He's going to kick someone out, and Yator just runs straight into them. Pops BKB, turns around. Oh, man, that damage is just building up so quickly. Quinn's got it in an and so is the bear. Duraccio battling up against Laurel, but the big bad boss of the, the fight is definitely Yatoro. And once he turns it's his over. eye on a hero, it disappears. Over. Game over for this one. The team spirit making absolutely no qualms about shutting gaming gladiators out in their own style. 33 minutes and it's done. This game needs to start off very well for gaming gladiators because while this may be a best of five, this game too feels particularly important, Avery. Counter gank and the rolling thunder and turn things around. You're really happy with that type of gameplay here because again, you're farming it up. You got Magnus Faceless Void. You know gaming are going to go into you. This is a hard duo to match up against. That'll help because Quinn wants to be able to make moves, particularly with this Arcane Root, which he's going to put to use now. Caught a mid-shield crash. So that ability no longer there with the two support rotations. It's easy to kill Laurel. The earlier you get aggressive OBS out, the happier you're going to be when that period comes. Another power rune should be secure from Quinn here. Oh, these runes are getting a little crazy. Uh... Oh, that skewer plays against Collapse as he does a ton of damage onto himself thanks to the trample from Quinn. Blocked out by his own Sprout, though. He's going to try and get to the other side of this cliff. Laurel does hop down to chase after him, though. Oh, brother. Guys chased away. Brother against brother here. Whose skeletons are better? Well, right now... It's going to be Quinn trying to jump in, but immediately stopped by Laurel. Once again, with the counter initiation, Quinn's trying to get out of here, but he's going to be caught. The Inkswell plus the Sans is going to try and trample his way over the left-hand side, and he is slowed down, pulled back in by Collapse, though. Oh, and Chrono. it goes here, actually locking away these two other cores Are right in fighting? front of this tower. Seller's trying to stop him now as they turn back around onto Ace, trying to finish him up. There goes that reincarnation. Duraccio doesn't have much mana to work with, and on the fresh life, Ace is going to be pulled back underneath that tower again, just like Quinn. They are in trouble. Well. Now Duraccio's under this one as well, surrounded by five heroes. He's going to start desperately morphing in his strength and try and wait for him over the left-hand side, but with all of this damage, he just cannot get far enough away. Game and Gladiators will lose all three of their cores, and that attempt at a fight at bottom lane. Farming up the entire map. <laughs> <laughs> he will match him. Oh, Laurel? It's essentially there to grab him. Mira can stop some of this, though. Throws out in silence. Thanks well. Oh, so much burst damage, though. Celery hit him big with that one. He got off the shield crash, though. No way. And those shields are keeping him alive. They need a bit more damage, but now he's teeping away. Goodbye. Oh, no. Gaming Gladiator's got to feel so bad about that. Choose which objective they want and claim it for free. There's no way you're fighting them without those big ults off cooldown. 
Or without Collapse being stronger, Skewer on Skewer play. You're coming with me, Skewer stun. up into the TP point from Quinn. Collapse, as long as he keeps the damage on him, he's not going to be able to blink away, and Quinn will finish the job. Great move from Duraccio. Those are the kind of plays you need to see here. These are good Morphling combos you can use for the fights and the team. Quinn starting to pick up the pace and instantly silence and a beautiful soul bite. And now it ink swelled up. Pinball coming through straight to the heart of Gaming Gladiators. Duraccio's already burned out of most of his mana. Pops his wand, but Duraccio, he needs to be able to get away from out both Paul and Yatoro. And he's been burned out. No chance there. Gaming Gladiators still have a chance though to be able to fight back around Ace and his Radiance. But without their carry, it's not looking great as Ace is going to be burned out of his first life. Can they fight around the second one? Quinn's sticking around. They certainly don't want to be giving up ace like this. Here's Proto. shot back. Coming up in two seconds here. He and just gets a bit of a poke, gets a reaction out of Gaming Gladiators. Ace will try and punish him, but... Just no follow-up. Yeah, he needs a lot more. Celery's gonna try and chase up. The TPs are coming in here. Tries to block him out with the Sprout, but Yutoro is running free. Duraccio chases after him. Hits him with the time this dilation, really though. Forced. But it is a very, very get first it? move from Duraccio, but he gets it. He gets that kill. No, turns back around. On the collapse. Oh, rp right in front of that tier two, but silenced up just in the nick of time before his skewer comes through. He wants more. Yeah, he does. He sees the opportunity. What a beautiful entrance from Duraccio into this game. That is the power of stolen time dilation plus the time walk, right? Could be massive for gaming gladiators. They have a double damage in Morphling's bottle. And they can get close. to this fight in time. Team Spirit may get wiped and lose the Roshan fight, and they are not doing this fast enough. Gaming Gladiators are going to get here, and it looks like Team Spirit have made the right read. They're going to smoke, backing themselves away. See if they can find the opening on Gaming Gladiators. Oh, Quinn has instead. position. But there's a war. Position on the high ground. BKB immediately goes out. Now he has to turn and chase, but he's not going to be close enough. Team Spirit got something big out that of him. Route, but they do they hit a wall. That's going to be able to hit all those heroes. The RP does manage to lock down the two heroes. They jump into the RP. Duraccio dies immediately. Oh, and he's going to have to do all the damage from here on out, but the Rolling Thunder is dangerous. It slows him down with the bashes, and the Rolling Thunder hits, and there's no chance. And now they leave Quinn. Yeah, trap him inside that chronosphere. His BKB is gone. Get the rest. Oh, it's Game and Gladiators who had an opportunity there to be able to upset. But now, just what they feared the most, which was losing a fight and giving the Roshan to Team Spirit. That may have just occurred. Yeah, which means Moposhka is a particular nuisance to them. As he once again Leads forward, just using the creep to be able to find information. They got the Harpoon, Skewer back. Now he does have BKB, locked down by the RP, but maybe the damage is going to be enough. It's going to be a close call. Quinn starts walking away. Celery's going to jump in with the Wrath of Nature. Soon coming out, he tries to use the Ogre Seal Totem to get away from the Rolling Thunder while they jump forward on Duraccio. They want to get something out of this. They see an opportunity, surely, but they couldn't actually grab anybody, just lacking the Disables. Glimmer K posing problems for Duraccio as well. He just can't see anything to hit. And Team Spirit able to disengage after that Wrath of Nature rooted them all, which means Yatoro wants to go back He's in. got an opening here. Looks for it with the Chronosphere. They were so grouped up on Gaming Gladiators, but he doesn't have the vision. He's now been grabbed. He's been time dilated. Disabled. They actually have that AoE. The calling goes out. He's on the other side. He actually gets away. Thanks well. Time walk undo so much of the damage. And now Gaming Gladiators have to play it a little bit slow. Have to respect that Soulbind. They cleanse themselves of the Ghost. That Silence is now gone. The Soulbind is away. Oh, Yatoro, oh, he's still waiting for his opportunity to get that Chronosphere. He got three. Out two, three, one in the back, two in the front, and that's going to be the Aegis down for the morph, like a second life for both him and Ace, though. Can Yatoro fight through this one? Is he going to be able to get away? The shot comes through, the entangle as well. That's enough. They bring down the carry. Now for the rest, Team Spirit. Playing back into this one, the it inks well. Now Skewer locking them together. Laro, maybe he can fight this one out. Duraccio, wave forms over it, trying to separate from his team a little bit. Make sure this wash puzzle doesn't utterly decimate them like it does Tofu. Well, in the back lines, Ace trying to chase down the rock. But Duraccio dies as Snarl. He does manage to finish him off just on the very tip. Just Collapse. enough to be able to get that kill before he falls. Collapse tries to skewer away, but locked down by Quinn in the end. Cannot escape the inevitable, which is just too many lives on the side of Gaming Up. How much room are you willing to give up right now? They charge, they spot Celery. Chronosphere on the two of them. So he's going to bring down the support first. Nice use of the dead shot there. That'll make sure Ace doesn't get punished too much. But Chronosphere for a five position. Yutoro wants to be able to employ, right? He wants to Chronosphere make sure that there's one hero or maybe two that gets no impact in the fight. Oh, Just like wait. it looks like Quinn. Ooh, he barely gets off that, but he is going to be slowed down as soon as the DKB is worn away. The time dilation kicks into play. And yeah, Team Spirit have caught him. 
just good vision on the map. Let's set up for this kill. And just as he was pushing towards that Aghanim Scepter, you're talking about the raking as the Primal Axe will also play a big part in these fights, just breaking these heroes down, removing some of the passives, letting them get easy kills on things like the Enchantress, removing some of the time lock on the face's Void. Any extra bit, you can gain an advantage for Zoracho in these man fights is going to be nice, but... I mean, the Raking Axe is great versus the ults. It's just a question of can you do anything with, like, the five seconds you have afterwards, right? They're actually going to man up. They're going to jump onto this face's void, see if they can burst him down. Once again, there's that Inkswell Heart dispel. Oh, into the time walk. An attempt, collapse, turns around, gets that RP on the two of them, locking down Zorachi and finishing him off. And now Ace is going to come back into this with not much support. With no Quinn, they knew they had the numbers advantage, and they take the fight in the game in Gladiators no matter the cost. He gets a jump away. Four stab helps him out, but it's not far enough. There is nowhere you can go. The collapse in Utoro cannot follow. That is a very bold move. When your primal is dead, he's so much of your damage, so much of your burst damage. I mean, again, they're very close to bursting Yotoro, but the man knows his limits. Elvin to oh, help in. Oh, Tofu! Yeah! A shot from downtown claims the life of Yotoro. <laughs> Just as I cast or curse the hell out of him, he gets shot down. Did Back in the game, on? though. They still don't have Ace. They're still looking forward with this smoke. There's and Quinn, there's with a hesitancy out here. Yotoro? Yeah, this is... Uh, I'm surprised Game of Gladiators. They're surprised that they're even out here. What Quinn starts the to hell is this one? to the high ground! Oh, oh Quinn. He doesn't have a TP! Where are you? Quinn! He's going to be able to get a force out down to the low ground, but that was an opportunity to get the pick off, and instead it's Collapse who finds the pick off. Another Ogre Seal totem for Celery, trying to keep him alive. Bump back in. Oh, the Swashbuckle just Great. literally outside of the range there, and they do. And Yotoro's back. Yotoro's back into it. Darachi will be the first one down. Quinn, he has BKB. Can he get it off? No, too many stuns. This damage is ramped up so damn oh, fast. Oh, Collapse got him on the ink swell. Yotoro says, you had your fun, you had your cliff walk, but I'm here to clean it up. Starting to pick up the pace on their supports, and these are scary ones. RP straight up in the top lane. He got caught trying to hit that tier two. You can get nothing for free against Team Spirit. Collapse denies Zorachio that opportunity. Zorachio compliments on the initiation, but the damage is done. Gaming Gladiators without their carry for 70 seconds. Catch whatever they can in the side lanes because, well, you don't have a carry, so there's not much point in acting like you're de gonna defend this mid lane. Just have to use Ace's strength. You have to find a way to use this Raid King Ags and the Radiance Burn. Get something going in the fight over the long duration. That is where the Pain Galeer shines. And I mean, Laurel hasn't even had to jump in aggressively yet. He's just playing behind his other cores. Yeah. Be a free lane of racks here. They're gonna go for number two. Duraccio, three seconds on the spawn. Butterfly completed for Yatoro now. No MKB in sight. You're gonna have to do this the hard way. Just charge in and hope it goes your direction. Checking it out, seeing who's TPing in. Toro with the Lincolns. He's got an extra life. He's got a BKB in his backpack for that second life. Oh, and they've got an opportunity from Collapse. Bold Celery out of position. All right. Raggio gonna try and use that faceless void form to be able to help out, but the Chronosphere goes into work. The old scepter not actually grabbing the real one. He is still up, and he finishes off the morph like so easily. And now the RP gets the other two cores. Team Spirit so clean. The extra ghosts come out from the Wraith King, but it doesn't really do anything. Ace just pops his BKB on the second life. They do manage to get another pick here on his salaries. He tries to jump forward. They've got nothing left in the tank on Gaming Gladiators. They are all going to fall. They're going to throw their damage around. The Chief's actually getting popped. His collapse got a little bit low, but in the foul, Laurel goes. A He's going to Laurel a rampage, maybe a double. No, Daryl Tofu's going to deny him that. They're going to call the GG unless... Pulled back in. No, oh, this one is a in. second rampage to finally close it up. <laughs> I mean, why not add to his total, right? This is the player with the most rampages in a single TI run in history, and he will add some more to the stat page here as Yatoro just mops him up at the end with way too much damage. I can refresh your orb, so you can't really deal with that. So this has been a collapse special throughout like the entirety of this TI, and he's really good at it, and it looks pretty scary here. I will say the game in its lineup, it looks pretty good though so far. I think whenever you play against a Dazzle, having that AA is really good if you can ever commit on him. Doing crazy Dazzle Spear Breaker things and Celery, celery in trouble. trouble in the bottom lane, and that is going to be your first blood. Collapse will claim it with a bash. Of course, a little luck goes a long way. Step. Real quickly, want to give a, a shout out to our observers, our hardworking observers who have been keeping us through this entire tournament. Ace, maybe in some trouble here, Maposhka. 
He's trying to dodge all of these ghosts. He doesn't want to leave the calling. He'll take that extra bit of damage to try and risk it, but he does end up falling as a result. And now Ace, he'll have some oh, nice helping spear. in from Tofu. Beautiful dead shot to push him back in and gaining gladiators. A very clutch fight there for them. A Tofu and Ace. Uh, Inkswell combination with the Spirit Breaker. Oh. Thought they were going to go on to Mira, but Mira is going through the portal. They don't have a stun to stop him. He gets the other side. Duraccio pursues. Dagger does hit him. Yeah, he's pretty damn slow, and he's going to hit him with another dagger. Mira, he needs the help from the Spirit Breaker. He has a snowball to buy a moment. Collapse. Pops his ultimate. He immediately goes for the kill on Tofu. See if they can trade things out here for the shard and the calling. That actually protects him there. Yeah, rotate Laurel bottom. They really want to punish the Rachio. There it is. Ult's coming back. The Inkswell charge in, chaining the stuns and adding up on the damage. I mean, there's no vision here. They probably had a read because Celery's been mid the whole time, right? It's going to limit where your observers are going to go. Just gets a really cheeky kill on the Spectre. Nice shard to buy some time. Good driving by Quinn. Gets around that little speed bump in the way. Hopefully, Duracho can finish him up, but not quite. No, Shall Grave comes in for Law. Perfect timing there. Quinn does manage to get some decent damage on Toro. And he Ace is hold. here. He makes the difference. He makes it so Team Spirit can no longer fight bad. It's an overwhelming amount of team fight that he'll put to work to bring down Yutoro. And it looks like he's going to chase down Maposhka. Miro really trying for this one. He might just get himself killed in the process. Will it be good enough? Maposhka still dies. And sure enough, Mira, he's going to be in trouble as well. Good use of the shard, blocking him out, but he still falls. Cannot stop. Game in gladiators as they bring all five. Learning from Team Spirit, perhaps. Smoke across the map. They failed to get the initiation on Collapse. We're going to try and join Quinn for the power rune. Quinn's going to need that help, too. He sounds up the poison touch. The Inkswell's on top of him, but he does manage to get away with the swashbuckle just in time. The charge is going to complete. Collapse, he's got his ultimate. He may not even need it, though. The I poison touch slowed it. him down so much. And Maposhka is getting a TP out the shot. Oh, he was so close, but it runs out. It doesn't get there in time. And now a snowball to the other side to meet Zoraccio, as it is now him who is surrounded by Team Spirit heroes. Too many to count. Especially when you don't have the global ability to connect. I mean, how much does Collapse oh, think he can Tofu. chunk through here? Tofu just left him alone. Tofu was needed to be able to disrupt this combination, but now Ace is left alone. Speeds himself away. Somehow the Inkswell didn't go off in time, but Poshka didn't pop that one. And Tarachi was like, okay, now it's my opportunity. Hello, Maposhka. Oh, almost got him with a fear shot there on the left hand side, but Maposhka still dies. Collapse still in trouble. Has a charge instead. Opts for the TP out, but that doesn't make it. Calculations not on point here. Yeah, he could have just charged the other side of the map. Maybe he didn't have a good target, but there was a mid wave. And he will collect a three extra three call. Such an important kill, too. Gaining gladiators with the ice blast on top of Laurel. Now, because they're only 2k net worth up, they've hit some timings, yes, but they still have to worry about the double hand of Midas. They have to play this clean. They need to be able to get good executions, but they can't afford to use any pickoffs. Good roll in from Quinn. From behind, though, trapping Team Spirit. Uh, shot goes out, looking for more. The dazzle was shown there. Quinn getting in front of him. Blocks him out with a swashbuckle, slows him down with the inhibit from the defuse of play. It allows Duraccio to do the damage. He pops a shallow grave. Laurel, he really wants to well, finish off Quinn. Will he get that kill? The poison touch. He's got a regen. A lotus given over to him as well. All the anti heal they have. And then also the chaos strike. That life steal that the chaos knight is so dependent on. And there is no downtime for this lineup. Look at a burnt out of mana. They try and give him over a little bit. See if he can charge his way out of there. But he's silenced up by the calling trapped on the corner. And then they use that storm pan to be able to catch more. Laurel's going to die as well. The dazzle getting no footing in this game. It slips right past Team Spirit. They that works the on Lord immediately spots Maposhka. And Duraccio recognizes that that is the hero he wants to get first. And the dead shot bounced over to Yotaro and hit by the Rolling Thunder. He's trapped, caught, and there's nowhere to go from there. Too many disables on the side of Gaming Gladiators. And that is a big paradigm shift from games one and two. Yeah, how do you wrap, though, against a Spectre and... Well, you got this Quinn. He is Archie running one. around with a Pangolier. You're not going to be able to solo in a lane for very long. It only takes a few seconds for Gaming Gladiators to spot the opportunity and jump onto you an Ice Blast. Not even needed. Tofu has the damage necessary to kill the support by himself. Collapse will try and find a pickoff on Tofu, and this will combine with Maposhka, so they strike back a little bit on the map. Maposhka is just going to stay hidden here. The charge canceled by the Spirit Breaker. Rolling Thunder very far away. <laughs> He's just going to initiate from 
3,000? Yeah, because at any point in time, the Spectre can join him as soon as he gets that initiation, but they don't quite catch him. The Ice Blast is going to be stretched out. Yutoro may see an opportunity to turn this around. Yeah, he's going to go for Duraccio here with the Snowball. With the the dispel. There's so many heroes. They dispel out the Phantasm, but Yutoro himself, he will bring down. He will use his own hand to take down the enemy carry. Now looks to finish up these Groovings if possible. Game and Gladiator one. trying so hard. The last one is going to die. Double kill for Yutoro, and they turn back for Celery. Uh-oh. Quinn's gonna be in for a rude awakening in a second here. He just needs his blink up and he gets it by the Dingo. Swash will go for the side, but they have the silence on him. The ghost remains with Quinn. He tries to go for a roll-up play, but he's got nowhere to roll away to. Those have TP back, but stuck in the corner, get some good damage from Swash yeah, Buckle. Too, too many heroes. Really nice scan to finish up that fight. So now it shifts the onus back on to gaming in terms of you gotta make an aggressive smoke, get vision back on the map, and keep setting up these pickoff plays for Duraccio, who's the one maybe getting picked off here. Zator just walks. Oxen blind. Get a free second gun, blade. pull him back in, but the silence is doing a lot of work. Quinn tries to roll up, but collapses. Oh, the ice blast does manage to grab two of those cores. Roll up, snowball onto Durachu. The Toro in trouble. The Toro's in big time trouble to give him the shallow grave. Or oh, what a shard. BKB, but a beautiful shard block it out. Some of these heroes, it's not enough. The Toro still falls, and now with the toss up in the air, Laurel will come down to a hard reality. Crash down, but he does have the BKB. And look at that, that heal. heal. That Aghanim Scepter with so many units around him, it's so much. <laughs> heal. He is not gonna die so easily. Gaming Gladiators thought they had an easy target. Oh Meanwhile, my fight to the bit of end. He'll what? bring down Duraccio before he finally falls. Collapse stuck though in the silence. The buyback required from Gaming Gladiators because Laurel was too tough of a nut to crack. That looked way closer than it should have been. <laughs> that team fight definitely helps still 500 off here, but that's gonna be a large damage ramp as the Shadow Step comes out. Look, is trying pickoff. to do this solo. It's a bit dangerous. Collapse. They're going to try and turn back around. They do have the Ice Blast. They'll finish off here pretty easily. And Collapse, he's got to be careful of his damage. But Yutoro, he comes in, swipes down Duraccio. But the rest of the team is now here from Gaming Gladiators looking for the catch. But Collapse has already rolled away. Catch him. Ball taking out. Oh, the hook shot. It's not quite enough. They have no stuns. Collapse breaks free. Straight through the man's heart. He did not care. He just walks it off. Can't really get much closer than that. And once more, Yatoro, he finds an angle in the fight, cleans up the Racho and gets the hell out. That is a full Silver Edge reveal done. And Looking now the Aegis is going to be taken away from Quinn. Ah, uh, the pickoff game is shifting, right? Yes, it is. They're not respecting the Shadow Blades, not respecting the aggression, but the Yule Scepter stalls him up. Collapse, Yutoro actually has more. BKB. They do catch the uh, Ancient Apparition. He's going to die pretty damn quickly there. Roll up. The Ruling's going to work, though. They need Just to stalling punish. out Yutoro. Now that his BKB is on cooldown, now their magic damage can really go to work, and they can slice and dice through that carry pretty damn quickly. But Poshka, obviously, he doesn't have much hope of living through this. So the fight does turn against them. I love that Duraccio still not slowing down. He may die every once in a while, but he says, you know, ultimately the end game is okay with me. We're still getting some good trade-offs and bites. I'm still going to try and limit your split push oh, by collapse. going on him whenever he can. Doesn't want to let him get away with a tier two for free. BKB, they stun. stick on top of him with the silence and the stuns. It's enough. Win is stunned up for so long. And now Tofu is going to be in some trouble as well. He pops his ultimate. That just kind of delays things a little bit, but there's no one coming to save him. If you're getting multiple ink souls off in these fights, it's probably going to win you the engagement. And right now, you're just getting outnumbered at a tier two. You overextended on. Courier will die as well. Another pickoff that they will miss, which is time for the Midas's to go to work, right? Yep, they have yep. been cranking this whole time and climbing the charts. This game is a 1k net worth lead now at 32 minutes. Dead even. And everything depends on these team fights. Collapse just They're charging. They're getting the right kind of initiation here. A charge oh that hits God, both that supports. Quinn. On the run here, they immediately jump after him. Laurel chasing after him with that shard to be able to slow him down. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Three dead on the side of Gaming Gladiators and Team Spirit have changed this game. The narrative was supposed to be Gaming Gladiators controlling and seeing if they could end it, but Team Spirit have turned this all back around in the space of just this five to seven minutes. Need to connect this ult on a big target and collapse. He's just gonna lead the charge with Bulldoze here. Not afraid of too much while both carries on the other side of the map. Look at him just running in there. 
This is a fight without Yatoro. Oh, that ward somehow slips past detection. Oh, no, no, no he's got it. Brace Lincoln gets him with the dispel on the Yule Scepter, but it is going to cost Celery his life. He does have five back. He's going to play for it. Quinn off the mark there with his blink in, trying to hit some heroes, but they've already popped their BKBs and are resetting a little bit. Celery, he's going to try and walk back into this fight. He's got to be careful, though. He may get caught by Collapse. He spots him. Down the A again. The tower. Yeah, that ancient apparition's gone. No more Ice Blast for you to be able to use. Ace has to use his ultimate. He knew the Toro was gunning for him there, Stintly and he could have been chain stunned up. Now they back away. Primal Split being used. If they can get everybody out, it's a dream for Team Spirit. Collapse is making that momentum, though. Pushed back by the Void Panda. Now hit by the Orkin. If they can kill Collapse, that'd be great. But he has so many dispels and so many heals. Spirit hard. jumping in. Going for the back line. The Pango's been caught, and Yatoro, he destroys him so instantly. Now turns his damage on to Durante. Oh, back charge. by Collapse. A charge on through. Tofu, he just managed to get the Force Staff down to low ground. Does get a dead shot on the Collapse that he Still pretty damn healthy, and they can't turn this one around. It is all Team Spirit, and they will feast on the Brewmaster last. Team fight decision making just off the charts here. I mean, the kiting, dealing with the ult, they just make it look way too easy right now. Otherwise, that is welcoming Team Spirit into your base. Charge complete, half his health. Yule Scepter is going to be used. Nicely breaking with that Lincolns, but. He didn't use that bulldoze towards the end there. And these are just free. They have the ways to get Collapse out every time. There's a Lincoln's, there's a Swell, there's Four Staff's Grave. Yatoro's gonna take his chance to he poke. first down, oh man! Before you can even complete the sentence, he's already gone. They do have an Ice Blast, though, that's pretty well positioned. Duraccio's already cleaned up the Grimstroke. It's not too bad, but Duraccio, he needs to get out of there. It's, oh my god, that's so much. Buy back from it's the too Spectre. much damage. Spectre has to win this now, but he has to be has careful to of that something. Dazzle. They have to be able to take away this Aegis at the bare minimum. Surely they have to go for more. They have to risk it. Collapse is going to charge on through to make sure you can't set up on Yutora. Now Yutora will turn back around on you. He's ready for that fight. He pulls back into Durantio. This could be it for Gaming Gladiators. And let's find a way out of it. Quinn's dead next. Now Durantio, a dive back for him. He falls. Tofu's pulled back in. He is pulled to his death, down into his grave. Quinn, last man standing for Gaming Gladiators. It will be a one-man stand. The highest net worth hero for Gaming straight off the bat. No turnaround potential, and you are running out of lives. You are running out of games to play here as Team Spirit. They don't want to just be the best team in the world. They want to prove that they are one of the best teams ever to grace this stage right now. And they are showing why. They're going to go for the Megas, play it safe. And Ags finished on Mira. He's about to kick this team straight out of the tournament if he has his way. And they're going to go right for the throne. Quick reactions from Quinn. Has to blink away. Just one little opening is all it takes with Mira lurking from behind. Ace back up. We'll see what he can do to stall this out. Gonna need one hell of a primal split here. Yutoro starts pushing forward. Mira doesn't quite get it there, and they actually stop the Spirit Breaker right in front of their base, but they're locked in by the shards. Quinn's able to hop around it, but now the Silva, it holds him in place. He can't do anything against that, but at least the Brewmaster can. Gets and they the kick split, him in. The throne is exploded, and now he's been pulled Welcome back. Welcome to hell. Oh, no. It is too much for Gaming Gladiators to be able to handle. They are not going to be able to get through this. They have to pray to get out, but the Cathedral is merciless. It is Team Spirit who are unstoppable. They will take it. The best team in the whole goddamn world, without a doubt. Silence every other team. 3-0. Absolutely an incredible performance in the Grand Finals against the best team in the season, an undefeated Grand Final team in Gaming Gladiators, a team that has defeated an entire lower bracket to get here. They take 3-0 in record time. Kick them out of this event, claim a second Aegis for the crew, the first one for Laurel, who is fit in immaculately with this roster. This is a team everybody had on their radar. Two on the comeback, too. Team Spirit did it every way possible. Nothing is left for them but the handshakes in the end for Gaming Gladiators, who had an admirable run through the lower bracket. I mean, it was the stuff of great stories, but... It comes to an end, to and for two times, the second time in the Dota's history, Team Spirit will claim the ages. Team Spirit win the International.